Yeah, I, 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 I hate, I hate, 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 hate writing about myself. So this is super fun. Oh. <laughs> it is, it is a skill. Yeah. Uh, What the hell is gall that inside? What the hell is this? Oh, okay. Some site in a language I don't speak. Okay. <laughs> cool. I don't know why they're linking to me 143 times, but thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is actually capturing what I want it to be capturing. You're multitasking right now. Give it your full attention I... tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Well, it's the problem is it's going to bother me now. So it's it's always going to kind of have my uh It's going to be in the back of my mind now cause But I'm, if you, you know. but if you give it a half attention then send it, it'll bother you after and Oh, you I'm not sending it, it tonight. I'm okay, definitely good. not sending it tonight. Like I know better than that. Uh, we'll talk about actually how creative program emails are going out. Yeah. It's news. That that's that that counts as news, yes. Newsish. Um, news adjacent. Um. People should be able to see and hear us. I hope. Okay. What episode is this? Three eighty four. There you go, Koo. Yeah. But whatever I whatever I wrote in the show notes is what whatever number it is. Well, you wrote three eighty four, so I hope that's right. I, I hope so too, because you know. Uh... Okay. Oh yeah, I should log into Twitch. I should open Audacity and do those things. Oh. <clears throat> It could be Burger Club. It very well could be. I'm going to tweet after I get everything settled, but I am uh, behind the times at the moment. Almost there. There's, there. Luckily, it is a week with a little bit less going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no there's no depressing news, so that's good. Uh, that is called the meta. Well, it's not that bad. Steve. It's pretty bad. It's not ideal. Listen, I, it's not bad because I've been winning games in it. So, it's, it's, you know. I have had less fun in objectively better metas, but also it probably shouldn't be this way. Yeah. I mean, I've been playing a lot more TFT than I have been Hearthstone off stream, so, you know. Mainly because of ladder anxiety at this point, so. Yeah. Low Dark Judge, Low Tito, Low Bolthar. Funky Monkey has a new Paladin deck. Yeah, top two hundred, good for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's been he's been hanging out up there a lot the last like week or so. Yeah, it's good for. I him. mean. If you right now is pretty good if you want to be a deck builder because you know what you have to beat. Yeah, <laughs> you you you're gonna see the same deck half the time at least. So you know, at least target that. Yeah, at it's least. It's funny that I you know that the VS report was saying well you can you can build I forget what it was Control, Control Warrior, Warrior to to beat to beat uh to beat Frosty K and you'll lose to everything else like what everything else. <laughs> uh, the the other deck that I've seen a bunch today, well, the two other decks are Thief Rogue and Quest Priest. So good oh, luck with God. your warrior deck. Good <laughs> luck. And those losses don't make up for the wins because they take about four times longer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually don't mind the Thief Rogue as much now because I just hit them in the mouth and then they go away and then I move on yeah. to the next game. Not a great so. place to get hit, all things considered. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, but 
the quest pre like if you concede jackpot on two or quest on one then maybe you can make the time up and it's probably how is worth quest it. priest being built to counter it though because like four fives are not what quest priest wants to deal with i i don't know if it's working i know that i'm seeing them oh, i'm okay, not playing enough. dk like <laughs> i'm just seeing them and I'm playing the other priest deck, which wins when they don't have Blackwater Behemoth and probably loses when they do. Um, I've come close, but mm. that seems to be the real the, the real uh, tipping point is Blackwater Behemoth on 7 or no. Yeah. Yeah, you just generate an Asphyxiate and, you know, move on with but your life. As the priest? No. As Shadow Priest. No, not as priest, no. As if Shadow Priest, I just have to hope that yeah. uh, Shadow Priest... If you're generating an Asphyxiate as Shadow Priest, you've, you've, you've tapped into some... Some dank memory that I'm not. There was aware a of. list with Nerubian Vizier that could get some stuff, but like, but it wasn't the right that's list. Still, that still discovers from your class, though. It does. You, so you wouldn't get an Asphyxiate. You get something else. You'd have to. You'd have to get a Shadow or Death or something. Or like you get an Identity Theft. No, against. No, I don't know. I'm sure there's some way to do it. Uh, you get. You generate a Call of the Grave, and then you get a Nagic Hexen, and then you take the Blackwater Behemoth. Yeah. That's, that's you there. You go. Figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> we got there we got there we found the line uh all right uh here here nope not installing an audacity update right now sorry oh that yeah is, that is not a thing oh did i press the wrong button no i oh crap nope 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 we're not doing that nope nope we are not doing an update right now uh, Slissa's Battlegrounds Bash. Got a link. Put it in the show notes. I just gotta grab a, I just gotta grab, grab a glasses wipe up. One second. Mm-hmm. Oh, why am I suddenly cold again? I don't really know what to keep for this first. I don't know what to keep against anything. <laughs> so the, so no, the, no, no, and no, the no, thing here for, is that... Or the Shadow Priest. I oh, don't know yeah. what to keep except a three drop. Yeah, I mean, a Shadow it's... Spirit I figured out, and the rest of it is like, I don't know. And the thing is, we're working off of a list that doesn't have stats yet. Um, so yes. I'm approximating... And I'm trying to not let my own personal experience say, well, the data is wrong. But also, I don't believe that the stats we have available reflect the deck's performance and, and the current build. Because there's just but nothing you, on HS Replay. Don't you have replay. enough games on your, like, my decks page on HS Replay? Uh, let's see here. That's what I was doing when I was... I forget what I was playing that was weird. I have um, 50 games. It's me on uh, it should be enough. my decks. It's 39 and 13. I switched one card. Wait. I wonder if I look at my Blood Rattle deck. <laughs> it's so, so far from what I can tell is that if you keep on dying allies, you win 100% of the time. We'll just tell people that and then they'll win. That's what my stats say, so it must be accurate. Oh, I, uh, I don't have enough games. It's just 12 and yeah. 3. But well, I'll I mean, bet. when I, apparently when I play Frost, uh, Frost Death Knight, and I keep Brand's Bron Brand Bronze Beard, I win a hundred percent of the time. So, hmm. you know, or or he ends up in my opening hand because I didn't actually keep him. But I I'm willing to bet that the uh, location win rate is absurd. Um, yeah, it's it's like it's almost ten percentage points higher than everything else in the deck except for Valor. <laughs> Okay, wait. My data, my decks. So interestingly, our my mulligan win rate for the, maybe this is why I was disagreeing about Arms Dealer. My mulligan win rate for Arms Dealer is thirty three percent. So maybe that's why I was, and I keep it two thirds of the time apparently. So maybe that's why I uh, felt so strongly about it. Yeah, that like I found it to funny. be somewhat decent, but like going second's a little bit worse. Because you really want egg coin quarter going first, I feel yeah. like it's probably fine because your hero power can control the board better. Let me see. Going, going first, going oh. first. I kept it sixty percent of the time, and the mulligan win rate was twenty five percent. So, well. yeah. 
Yeah, my data is not useful with only 15 games because it's like mostly 100% injury. Yeah. Skeletal right. Sidekick, however, I kept 25% of the time with 100% win rate. So That's good. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Data's stupid, you know. Yeah, in small in small sample sizes. Small sample sizes are small. Yep. Uh <laughs> my my three hundred percent kept cards for Rainbow Demon Hunter: Bone Breaker, Plague Strike, and Construct Quarter. Sounds about right. Yeah, yep. that's that's uh. <laughs> like, yep, those are the cards. Those are the those are the broken those cards. Are the cards there you that go. I've kept. That makes sense. Can't argue. I mean, you just keep the you know keep the Construct Quarter, toss everything else. It's fine. That's that's uh. You know? Oddly enough, the the construct quarter win rate for that deck was not actually as hot. Um, Dark Judge Rainbow is good for Edelweiss, but overall is not performing all that well. Uh, no mean... one plays my list, so it's kind of hard to. Yes. Snake tongue. We should just call it snake tongue since. It's what it is. It's distinct from uh, from whatever they have data on. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's an interesting creation. The right. the image has the the three four that you draw a card whenever something dies, and I'm like, that is just so not in my deck. That's the well. That's that's not even in the frost DK anymore. Like, but it but it was in like the rainbow DK pre mini set, right? Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, for like the you're on like the meta page. Well, it's because it it knows enough to label my deck as Rainbow Death Knight, uh, right? okay. looking at its data, so it puts that image. But um, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's an easy easy label, right? It sees one of each rune. It calls it Rainbow. <laughs> I mean that's that's a pretty easy algorithm to I I could write that. Now the the blood rattle deck. That's one that'll mess with it. You're gonna have to put these codes in the show notes because no one's gonna know what you're talking about. I mean you know. I mean why 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 start now, you know? That's, we have a lot of helpful codes in the show notes. You know, some, sometimes th things are an exercise for the listener hat, you know. I have 81 games on Snake Talk. I believe you do. All right. Are we ready? I, I have... I'm not recording, but I could be. All right. Um... I should be good. Tweeted, tagged, pinged. Yep. Quote yeah. tweeted. So. I seen. I seen it. Okay, I am recording. I am recording. Recording. All right. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Starting the show in five, four, three, two. Shadows hide you. I am listening. Our paths converge. So good to see you. Hail to you. Never lose hope. Here for a chat. By you. It has only begun. Fight on, friend. Hello and welcome to episode 384 of Coin Concede, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you. It is Thursday, 
February 23rd in the evening. Almost done, done with February. Last episode of February. From Gadget New York, it's me, Ridiculous App. From Nomergon, Ohio, we have Edelweiss. Hello. And from Northern Massachusetts, we have with Good. Hi. And from wherever you are, listener, we have you. Thank you so much for being here. We have our new patron, Nulzy. Nulzy, thank you so much for the support. Everyone leaving us reviews. Thank you so much for leaving us reviews. Everyone that's watching live, thank you for being here. Everyone that's listening, thank you for listening. Life Ladder. Who do we start with? Edelweiss is currently pacing deck codes. We'll let her finish that. But if you want what she's about to talk about there in the show notes, Steve, why don't you start? Why don't you start? So, um... So, completing the arc of this meta is turning me into an aggro player. Um, I was, I've been trying to maintain my rank. You know, like I came in, I, I, I came in fairly high at Legend with Unholy Death Knight at the beginning of the month that I've been trying to kind of keep that rank at least somewhere in the 11x range, given my misadventures over the prior month or two. Um, so I was playing a little bit of Evolve Shaman until it became pretty clear that Evolve Shaman was no longer the new hotness. And, it uh, cooled on off. Monday, uh, it cool. it, yeah, uh, it, you get it? the meta little, evolved. Yeah. Little, little ice pun. Or maybe the meta devolved. Hmm. Depends which side yeah. of the table you're on. I guess it depends, but, um, on, on, uh, Monday I decided that I was just going to, uh, pick up the new Icy Hotness and try the new minion-based Frost DK. And uh, that deck's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> turns out, I, I did face... What did I... What did I tweeted it out. What was it, like 70, 70 to 75% Death Knight over the course of the stream? Which was... Uh, yeah, that's a lot. And I, it seems to have probably gotten worse based on the popularity numbers on HS Replay, but... There's a reason because I mean Frost Death Knight is very very good and it's worth abusing while you can. It was it was good enough that I did something I haven't done in a long time and I wrote a guide up on it, which I put up on Off Curve because I used to do this a while back and then I kind of fell out of it because they took a long time to put together and I kind of decided to get over myself and stop being a perfectionist and just put something out quickly to help people try to climb with it while it's still a deck because we're probably getting a balance patch sometime in the next few days and there's no possible way that this deck is going to me is going to remain in the same state that it is but um we and we talked about it a little bit on the show last week but there's a new version from Recfam that um runs might of menethil which is a very very good card in the deck like as a one of like i don't I don't think you want two of them because there's just like too many min too many weapons that you're gonna have at a certain point. And like there are games where you're just sitting there with two bone breakers and a mind of menethil in, in your hand and kind of you know a slightly sad. But I mean, it's eight damage face when ahead of being able to, and another board freeze ahead of when you get to the frost from fury turn. So it sometimes just kind of helps you get there with the extra burst damage that you need. It's not really burst damage, just you know, just chip damage. Um, but the deck is, is very, very good. I think it was, Recfam took out Astalor from McManterface's list. And, and I think that's correct. Cause like, you're not going to 10 very often when you're playing this deck. I, I mean, I guess if you're playing against a blood death knight or like a quest priest or something like that, you might, but even then, like the damage that you're getting, the, the damage that's actually going to hit face with the Astalor is probably equivalent to the damage that's going to hit face with the, with the might of Menethil, except the Might of Menethil hits, you can get that damage into the face earlier before they can find Vampire's uh, Vampiric Blood or all of the healing in Quest Priest or, or you know, Light Shower Elementals or whatever. And you can you can use that to kind of get over before they can start really stabilizing. Um, yeah. But I went from, yeah, sorry, go ahead. The the change to so the evolution. This was a Pheno Hunter race deck that we called bait last week. We were wrong. I was wrong. I called it bait. Um, so the adjustments, uh, overall, like, uh, call them communal adjustments. I don't think any one person made the changes. Um, Body Bagger and Acolyte of Death fell out for Chill Fallen Baron and then two tech slots, uh, which has usually been Bran and something. McBannerface played uh, Astalor and Recfam played Mighty Menethil. Uh, I believe that uh, that banter hit rank one on Asia 
playing both and cutting a harbinger of winter going down to one of those which is it the deck list looked kind of ugly but he got rank one on two servers with it so there's got to be something Requiem got rank one on the third server with yeah, yeah. so Astalor the the upside of Astalor is that it's better in your bad matchups or it, air quotes bad worse but still probably around 50 percent um because Menethil does tax your corpse count, which you want in those matchups pretty badly for a marrow manipulator. You really want that thing to be a pyroblast on six, and Menethil does make that happen less frequently. Menethil is much better in minion matchups in the mirror, but if you're teching for your bad matchups because you think you're going to win the mirror anyway, then Astalor makes more sense than Menethil. I would bet for the vast majority of players, Menethil is better. I like that card a lot. Uh, but if you want to make sure you don't tax your corpse count, and you're seeing a lot of blood decays or quest priests, then it probably makes more sense to run Astalor, but it's going to depend on your pocket meta. Uh, and there are some people at High Legend that are trying to counter this deck, but as you can tell from it getting Rank 1 Legend on three different servers with one card difference between all of them, uh, and the same card was not changed in, in on each list, you can kind of do whatever you want with those last couple yeah. slots. That's not going to really make the difference there. Yeah, when I was looking at HS Replay last night, like the two lists were like 56.9% and... Uh, 57%, like, they were, like, 0.1% difference. Like, it's, and, like, yeah, there's, like, slight differences against, like, so if you don't run Astalor, you go from 56% against Blood Decay to 54%. Well, okay. I guess I can live with that. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's not, it's not like it's, like, a 10-point difference, right? It's, like, a slight difference, but, uh, but I started the stream at, like, I don't know, 1700 Legend. I'd, I'd, been trying a whole bunch of stuff and just kind of like couldn't get it like i'd i tried death rattle rogue i'd tried tried a, some different flavors of evolve shaman and and nothing worked and then i started playing this deck and i climbed back up to like i don't know 700 750 um so it's if i could do that with an aggro deck you know anybody can i think so but it's you know it does it does require you to you know plan out your turns and think about how you're using your resources and and have a good plan like a lot of it is kind of working from the frost worry frost worms fury turns backwards which is it requires more macro game planning than maybe some people are used to because that you know that your turn seven and your turn eight are pretty much spoken for so it's like well what am i doing to get to turn seven such that that's going to either end the game with the 10 da 10 face damage or set me up for a turn nine like a brand marrow manipulator or a brand school teacher to get the rest of the burn or or you know something to uh to get there knowing that those two turns are taken up but it's like i i you know i mean i'm not I, i'm not gonna say i'm not enjoying it it's not what i would choose to play but sometimes you gotta love the one you're with you know yeah and there's some there's some joy and novelty in the play patterns here, but let's be clear, this format has historically worked. Uh, this is, yep. I put it behind aggro DH, day one DH. It's not, we are not at that level. But yep. I put it on par with Karazhan Midrange Shaman, uh, which is, you could technically play a couple other things, but yep. you probably shouldn't. You probably should just play this. And your bad matchups are even or the mirror. Um, so it's just like you can hard tech a deck to get close against this. You can win games against this deck. But I have HS Replay, last three days Legend pulled up right now. There are three decks over the 50% mark. Frost DK is number one at 55.38% globally. Number two, Evolve Shaman, 52%. 3% lower. Undead Priest, 50.02%. Barely over the line. That's our explanation deck for the day. And then everything else under 50%. Now, there's a lot that's under 50%, right? We've got, like, 12 decks in the 49 to 46% category. West uh, Hunter, top of tier three. Wow. It's it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but because you actually are decent against Evolve Shaman because you run Trinket Tracker, so you can Urchin Spines Ricochet Shot. For those that don't <laughs> know what those cards are, Trinket Tracker is the new 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. It draws a 1-mana spell. Urchin Spines, one mana, I believe it's a nature spell. It makes your spells poisonous this turn. And Ricochet Shot, one mana arcane uh, arcane spell. It deals one damage to three random targets. Three random different enemy targets. 
So if they evolve into a scam and they have like another token out or whatever, two mana kill everything. You're okay. Yeah. yeah. So and there is yeah, and and outside of like Blood Decay and Quest Priest, there's not a lot of healing in this meta. So like just the damage from Quest Quest Hunter can get there. Like it can be enough. The deck that heals the most after those is probably Thief Rogue. And it's <laughs> I'm so irritated by the amount of. Do we have to start out the show that way? It's <laughs> it's always there. It's always there. You didn't even know it was here, but there was a thief rogue. Um, so this is a very diverse meta outside of the oppressive deck at the top. There are a lot of decks in the minor leagues. There's only one at the all star ranks, but there are a lot of decks that are clumped together in the minor leagues. This is going to be an extremely diverse format once they pull back. DK and probably Shaman as a domino, and we'll see where we end up. But there are a lot of options that are almost good enough against each other, but can't compete with the number one thing. So yeah, it's possible, okay. but unlikely there are nerfs tomorrow, Friday. We have no inclination of this. The only reason that I'm saying this is because the window historically is nine days after the patch, the following Thursday after the mini set, when they need to move quickly. But because there was an American holiday on Monday... We pushed that one day. And so it could be a small patch on Friday with same-day patch notes if they rush it. We have been given no indication this is coming. Uh, The QA teams at Blizzard, along with a lot of teams at Blizzard, are facing a massive morale crisis, as we talked about last week. I don't know how fast they're moving. I don't know how many people are there. Uh, So I wouldn't expect it. But it is technically possible, and there is technically precedent. But I would not expect it. It's probably next Tuesday. Yeah. And, and and I've been like, as I've been playing it, like the test that I have for like, is a card completely broken and need to be nerfed significantly is the four mana call to arms test, where back when that card was there, if I'm not playing a mirror, if I lost, did I draw the card? And if the answer is no, most of the time, then that card, you know, because like almost all the time, if I lost the game and it wasn't a mirror, I didn't draw a contract quarter like almost every time, right? And that was the that was the way it was with format of call to arms too. Like it, it, the games that I lost were games that I didn't draw call to arms. So that's that's kind of a pretty good sign that this needs to be changed and probably it, it might need multiple changes to the card. Like I've been hearing some people saying like, well, maybe it should just transform the minion. I, I don't think that's going to do it because then Unholy is just going to play it. Right, like Unholy doesn't care if you're transforming the minion. Like this version of the of the deck cares about you know popping death rattles, but Unholy would be perfectly fine if you're taking like a one three taunt or like a or or like a skeletal stranger or whatever and turning it into a four five if that's all we're doing. I, I think it's it's probably gonna have to hit durability and and possibly the stats both in order to get this in line. I think it, I think they can get there, but I don't I don't think this is going to be like you know shaving one number i think there's probably multiple numbers you're gonna have to touch on this thing well i have been somewhat silent because while uh let's see 75 of my games this week have been death knight pretty much none of them have been frost because i hate mirror matches because you are who you are as a person we understand we yeah. welcome you with open arms please tell us about your off meta death knight decks that are actually okay uh yeah so the first one i talked about last week it's my my sort of rainbow or as had has named it snake tongue snake tongue uh death knight which just has a lot of cards that you know kill things while making things uh like strike and no muncher, probably some of the the best ones. But yeah, it's 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 a bunch of stuff that does that. You can almost think of school teacher as a five drop that does that because usually you get a cheap removal spell. Uh, so if that's your turn five, you get a four four a one one and kill something. And yeah, it I showed wicked good a clip where I was just like, tell me this is not the most fun deck ever. <laughs> Where a shaman had me at like five life or something uh, with a crazy board, and I did a brand school teacher turn that involved probably a horn of winter and 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 then playing more things. And I like cleared their board and gained twenty life from from double vampiric blood. So 
it it's a uh, it's a good time. It's very versatile. You know, you, you, you know, I get to run Sindragosa, which is great. But as I was, because I was playing all this stuff, to be full disclosure, I was working my way back from like you know getting up to legend and then going from like five or six k. Now I'm finally at like you know fifteen hundred or something. But so as I started seeing fewer evolved shamans and more uh, frost DKs and stuff, I had this crazy idea that was, uh, what if I played Blood Death Knight, but instead of having Corpse Explosion and uh, all these removal tools, what if I just ran eggs? <laughs> and so... So, you, so the no-hands gamer approach to the meta, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. So it has Foul Egg, which is in the other ones, but I also have Nerubian Egg. And, uh, and I even have Burning Blade Acolyte, which I, I only run the one, but it's been, it's been pretty solid a lot of the time. And then, of course, if you don't have Construct Quarter to pop them, sometimes they just stick around. And once you do finally go Soul Stealer, you remove your opponent's board, but then you also pop your Death Rattles. And you've got some, some minions to say, like, hey, deal with me. Uh, it also means that I've got these death rattles in play that my opponent, if they want to play the uh, corpse frost thing, uh, cor marrow manipulator, marrow manipulator, they run the risk of blowing up my eggs and and having to deal with board. So they they soak, which is very nice. Um, and because some other folks have been playing blood as a perceived counter to frost. I get to murder them as well because I don't have junk cards like Corpse Explosion in the deck. I also had some games against Big Spell Mage where they played Barbaric Sorceress and were confused to not hit any spells because the deck only has Obliterate and Vampiric Blood. I kind of follow the confusion, by the way. It's, that's, yeah. it's plausible to me that they were off-put. Yeah. No. So, uh, and every once in a while, you still get those stupid games where, you know, people don't even know what kind of demon hunter you are forever. Or not demon hunter. Uh, Death Knight you are forever because, you know, your early game was foul egg, Nerubian egg location. And they're just like, why am I facing down so many four attack minions on turn five? And, uh, and as they're sitting there with their last solid alibi or whatever getting asked to lord they're like wait a minute that was a blood decay <laughs> <laughs> so what this reminds me of blizzard fans out there time to magic talk 18 minutes 45 seconds so who remembers skull clamp the magic yes! card skull clamp the magic card skull clamp <laughs> Incredibly broken card. It was, it was an equipment, which is, it's like a, a location that doesn't have charges. You just move it around. You play it, and then you pay to equip it to something. It says, equip thing gets plus one, minus one, and whenever it dies, draw two cards. So what happened is, it was such a crazy powerful engine that basically the equivalent of Ramp Druid added 16 one ones to the deck in order to draw a bunch of cards. They called It went from Tooth and Nail to Elf and Nail. So that's what I'm hearing here is, what if we took a control deck, took out all the control cards, and put in eggs and construct quarter? You know what you do to any deck? Put in eggs and construct quarter, and it's probably a better yeah. deck. Corbett hit top 100 in standard, because he's not playing wild right now, with four eggs. He put in Nerubians. He swore by the Nerubians. I, so, I think they're really solid. Like, I... I wonder if they could find their way into certainly undead, but maybe even the frostless. Like the I four four is I very just don't know big. What you take out is the thing. Like that list. Well, is you would so cut tight. the two yeah. tech card yeah. slots. You wouldn't run the brand, and you wouldn't run Menethil or whatever. Oh, you can't or cut brand. Brand is like borderline illegal in that deck. You can't. Yeah, cut brand, that brand deck. school teacher is nuts, and and brand. Uh, Corp uh, marrow manipulator is is pretty yeah, gross. I mean, you, are you could cut it, one of the harbingers. But... Then you cut one of the harbingers. You could cut a sidekick, I guess. Though I like sidekick a lot. But like you could cut yeah. a harbinger. Um, I, I mean, I, the, the point of the harbingers though is that you're you're like the whole point of the deck is that you're guaranteeing yourself at least one frost rose fury on seven. And if you're cutting the harbingers, you're making that harder because then you're relying on finding like frigidara or like specifically the other the other harbinger or just getting lucky that you're that you're pulling it like. 
the the that's the reason that the deck works is the two harbingers because you're guaranteeing that you're drawing the frost spells out of the deck right i could see a world where you replace arms dealer because you're uh like it's it's not an undead to gain benefit from it but i don't know I, again i don't know if it could or should make its way into frost but nervian eggs have felt pretty incredible and one of the really mind gamesy things about Death Knight, which I admit I don't love because it's sort of the thief rogue problem when they were doing uh, Maestra, is you see Death Knight and currently we assume Frost, right? But there's a chance that it's blood and you just mulliganed for the wrong one. Uh, and I even saw a, a couple unholy is there not so much right now but yeah certainly when everyone's opener is foul egg something <laughs> construct quarter you just don't know what you're they're just doing. cosplaying as frost is what right doing. so i just i play the foul egg and then i play the Nerubian egg and they're like that's weird but they think i'm unholy or frost or something and and then i play vampiric blood or obliterate and they're like oh what <laughs> but it it's presents this issue of and regardless of any of that stuff playing egg is so threatening if you have construct quarter that i've seen people end up losing games because they were like well what if you have construct quarter and they kill it and and like use removals or make trades and stuff and i'm just like great <laughs> this is doing its job now i have corpses <laughs> Uh well listeners this this is a surprisingly interesting badly warped meta and there is some value to badly warped metas because you know what you have to beat it's a very clear target and it, like this is at least at least this is not please change contra quarter if anyone's listening i'm going to say that first that's my disclaimer please change that card among and also evolve shaman while you're at it as a domino but at least we're not dying from hand on turn six or seven out of nowhere this is a board based meta now the board is there four or five rushers and you're nothing usually unless you're in a mirror match or you have eggs i guess but uh it's at least a predictable board based meta and once they pull back quarter and of all shaman scams, there will be a lot of push and pull here. And if you want to target right now, you know exactly what you have to hit. Yeah. This is kind of the monkey's paw version of a board based meta. Right? Like this is I wish for a board based meta. Okay, here you go. <laughs> it's like clearly it is badly warped, but there is some fun to be found. However, unlike my co hosts, my hands are clean of Death Knight. No, no, I'm playing Priest. But listener, do not fret. It's Purple Priest. We get one last dance with Void Touch Attendant before she goes to the Great Smork Party in the sky. Get one last dance with dealing damage with Purple Priest. And let me tell you, climbed 2,000 ranks in the last two days of this deck. Uh, I am at rank 290-ish right now and two days ago I started at that number with a two in front of it uh so you know I was trying all sorts of stuff and like obviously the frost deck was good and it was okay like and I climbed with it but you know I wanted to try some other stuff and I didn't find anything that clicked with me and then Zach starts prepping the list for the VS report and he finds this undead priest list and I had tried a lot of Undead Shadow Priests this expansion. It's by far the most played archetype this expansion. But I hadn't found one that really clicked. And he finds one with double Whispers of the Deep. Uh, that that card, one mana shadow spell, silence a friendly minion, and then shoot one damage missiles at minions based on the silence minion's power. So if it's, for example, an incorporeal corporal, as an example... Then it shoots five little missiles, and the minion is silenced. And it's pretty good that you silence that minion because it has the text, after this attack, it dies. So we just take that away, and instead we give our opponent the gift of five little missiles. So it's also a shadow spell, so it works with the hero, and it works with the with, with the needle. And uh, I picked that deck up, 
and I played it for 50 games. I made one change about 35 games in, and my win rate is uh, slightly above 70% with it. Now, I don't I don't know if this will happen everywhere, but I think the deck is extremely underrated. We're going to talk about it for Dexplanations. I will note, we are ahead of stats on this particular build. There aren't a lot of stats out there. In fact, none that I could find an HS replay with Double Whispers, which is really the game changer here. And we don't play Rotting Necromancer. It's a decent card, but it's not what we're looking for here. We really want to make sure Bone Collar, which is the superior 4-drop for us, always gets back a, a good Undead, and Rotting Necromancer just doesn't work there. Um, we only play 7 Undead in the deck. You can play up to 8. I wouldn't go lower than 7, but I don't want Double Brutal Skin Zombie because that card's kind of medium, uh, just a backup plan. But it's really been working for me, and it's been surprisingly decent at clearing Death Knight boards and faces. So it's pretty good. It's fun. Does damage. Having a good time. Share it with people in the Coin Concede Discord. They're also having a good time. So we're going to share it with you, listener, in the explanation segment and try and help you have a good time. And I do expect that it'll perform pretty decently after changes, but it's surprisingly good in my experience against Death Knights right now. Because if it wasn't, I wouldn't be climbing. Because <laughs> ladder right now is, as previously noted, infested with them. But let me tell you, there ain't no feeling better than when you have the Shadow Cloth Needle up, they pop something on four, and then they have four fives up, and then you do the Shadow Word on death, and that extra damage just gets them. It just gets them. Really enjoyable. In Void Touch Tenant, I don't know if y'all know this, card does a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Like, people just die out of nowhere. There have been a few times where, like, my Shattered Spirit is softened up, and so you just, like, Void Touch Attendant, Attack Face, and Mind Sear it. That's... <laughs> 13 for Yikes. two mana that's 13 if you have a shadow cloth needle it's 15 what the hell that's a lot of damage plus you still have some mana left over for your hero power to go face after that if they're still alive there have been so many times i had more stuff to do and they just they just died and it was so where'd annoying. you go yeah <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that later but we do have a little bit of news a little bit more speculative news um also I don't know if Steve mentioned this. He wrote a, a, a guide on how to play Frosty K. It's in the show notes. It's over on offcurve.com. You should go read it. It's a good read. You should go check it out. It is written content, not video content. So you can read yeah. it as you want. And you don't have to have headphones on. You can just read it. It's just words. Yeah, I did that because, well, first of all, I know that there's some people in who are not sighted who can't really consume video guides. And also, I, I done this. I... I've been trying to find a way to get some of this content out and like a YouTube channel would be the way to do it. But also I'm just not cut out for it, but I can type a lot. So um, this is something that I did. I, I was doing this a little bit a year ago and then I kind of fell off of it. But if this type of thing is helpful, you know, and, and you like it, let me know. And I may try to do more of this because I, I find that there are, I have been getting a fair amount of feedback that, you know, video video guides are nice, but sometimes just having a, a written reference to go back to is is helpful also. And, um, you know, that's kind of gone to the wayside for the most part. So I'm doing my doing what I can to uh, to try to fill that void a little bit, though. I'm not doing one for Thief Rogue, so. <laughs> Understandable. All right. Shall we hit the news? Yeah. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. a lighter news week during a holiday week we don't have patch notes today we don't know when the patch is coming could be tomorrow probably tuesday but mitigate your expectations give it a second and we do have one piece of information about wild from the matt london known ryan's deli enthusiast and also head modes designer over at uh, at team five Hi, y'all. Recently, we've seen a lot of passionate conversation regarding the Hearthstone Wild format. Thank you for that. Today, we kicked off a Wild Summit, a big internal discussion about the state of the format and how we can bring you the best possible experience. Wild has a lot of moving parts. It's unlikely adjustments will happen this week, but we're committed to building a great plan for Wild and sharing more info once we do. Thanks. So, an announcement of discussing what an announcement could be. So, very tentative, just saying, yo, we've been reading your salt tweets. But it's better than not getting anything, and boy, wild players have had a lot of salt tweets lately. I don't claim to be all that wired into the format, 
but uh, it seems like it is just having the problem that Extended had at the end and Modern has now of it's just too large, and it's a non-rotating format, and people die. And some of the play patterns are gross. And at this point, if you want to pull that back, you have to really strongly consider the design of, of what Wild is. I remember this point in... I think it was either Extended or Legacy. World Gorge or Dragon. Time to magic talk. 31 minutes. There was a very, very <laughs> strange combo with cards that were printed about 10 years apart, which is where we are now in Wild. We have about 10 years of sets. Where in, in the original base set, there was a card called Animate Dead, which was the original reanimation spell of bringing something back from your graveyard, they didn't know how to do it when they made the game, so it was an enchantment that enchanted a dead creature in your graveyard, and then they made a dragon that blinked out all of your permanents when it came into play, yep. and then brought them all back when it died, so it would blink out the enchantment that brought it back, and then you would get all your lands back untapped, and then the enchantment would come back and bring back the dragon. you just do that forever and then kill them. So, unintended, because the cards were 10 years apart and they don't even make cards the same way anymore... That's kind of what we're running into with every wild expansion, where they had to temp ban test subject, where they had to nerf hysteria because of a, a one drop from two years prior and a three drop from two years prior to that. Like hysteria, wretched tiller, and, and death something. The, the, I don't even remember. The, the thing that gives immune for a turn. I don't remember what it's called. Don't oh, care. yeah. Death, it's like death speaker or something. Yeah. And yeah, uh, and, and I mean, just like half of the warlock cards, right? Like it's just like they print a warlock card and it's banned, right? Like the the warlock quest is banned, Stealer of Souls is banned, like it's just like the whole yeah. warlock class. And and right now, like this card warlock is with with some of the new cards that just got printed is very good because you just you just fill up your hand with like Fists of Jaraxxus and you run, I don't even know what the name of the card is. I was playing a little bit this of the, this week. There's like a one mana minion that copies a fell spell in your hand and you're only fell Grave spells. Grave Defiler. How can you, <laughs> how do I know Grave Defiler but not Death Speaker? Thank you, chat for Death Speaker, Gonzo know. and Jay Correct. I appreciate that. But yeah, and there's a bug with Cataclysm and the discard spells where Talented Arcanist is just a weird card. You know, with the floating, yeah. your next spell is plus two spell damage. Right now, everything you discard gets bonus spell damage. So that Soul oh, Barrage no. deals eight. Is Fist that Jaraxxus even a bug? Six. That's just the it way is Talented Arcanist works. It is it? not, because but, if you well, do Rune of the Archmage, then you get no spell damage. So the Rune eats the buff. So the Cataclysm should eat the buff the same way. But it doesn't work that way because of how the discard happens. Yeah. And and I mean, and also, you still have Malchazar's Imp, so you Cataclysm with Malchazar's Imp. Malchazar's Imp is a whenever effect. So you discard your hand, you draw nine cards, you do, like, 16 face damage... You've cleared the board, so you're um, so the the one that does like eight, like six face, six missiles all go face, all the fists of your axis go face. You end up with like two three threes and two two five taunts, and, and you also draw your opponent's nine dead. Cards. <laughs> like yeah, well yeah, <laughs> which you is know, significant. You have, to draw the, you, have, you have to draw the last soul fire to kind of finish the job usually, you know. But yeah, it, it's just like it just, and I mean the fact that like even Death Knight, like Death Knight has no cards in wild but just even death knight was one of the best card best decks in wild just because of you know the gen hero power of being one mana and then just neutrals with death rattles was just good enough to make even death even death knight like one of the best decks in wild for a while so i mean and and they've said that they don't balance for it which i mean how the hell could you um, but maybe we need like a modern for starters. And I don't think that's going to solve the problem. Cause I know I've seen a number of tweets from wild players this week. Like we don't, we still want to be able to play with all the cards. We just want more frequent balance updates, which I mean, I, that seems like a Herculean task, but you know, and it's I, tough with stuff that's in standard, right? So uh, a lot of these things like discard warlock, it's something that is hardly ever relevant in standard because there's usually just not enough pieces but then you get this critical mass in wild same thing with like secret mage right that's yeah. also has a, a critical mass and and it's all these things that are pretty good power level in standard but then when you just have everything <laughs> the mana cheating is exacerbated you, you're just like not bang for anything and uh and it, and it really goes nuts so okay do you just 
balance around the standard cards? Do you have different versions of the cards for a while as standard? Like that doesn't really work. Yeah. Or uh, or do you ban cards? And it sounds like they don't want banning cards because they want to be able to play with things. But it's otherwise, really... Otherwise, what's the point of having wild? Right. right. But it's really tough if you've got a new card that is totally fine and standard and ridiculous and wild. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's always... There, you're, the other problem you're always going to have with wild, right, is you always have two groups of camps. Two camps of players, rather. You have the wild enthusiasts who are they that, that's all they play they're looking for you know they want to be able to play like broken wild stuff but they also don't want it want the the meta to degenerate every time that the new cards get printed that's but you also people, have by the way they're they don't agree that's two different okay. halves of the same hole of the same so that's that's two different factions of the same group but then there's also the well my cards rotated and i still want to play the decks that i used to play right and those two groups are i mean that that's kind of a fiction at this point anyway i mean i guess it's not really at the low ranks like the casual it's wild the vast players. majority of the format it's just we yeah. don't hear yeah. from them because they don't tweet because they're playing their decks right like right. if you get below like eight or nine stars right then you're just seeing you're you're just seeing kind of people reliving the glory days with and it's and it's fine because there's no real meta it's only once you start climbing closer to legend that everything just starts to consolidate and you have people abusing different things that aren't decks that they used to play and though that meta gets very you know very broken very quickly and really the only car it it takes a card being like giga busted it to quote fino um you know in order oh giga bust, busted dude sorry we got flack um, for my fino impression last week don't don't, I don't yeah I, i'm not i'm not pushing it but you know like it has to be like <laughs> not not just like virtually broken but actually broken in order to make an impact in that meta because like you get like two or three cards per like 135 card expansion that are playable because they're they're like straight up broken and they can make a they can actually make an impact by the way i this is not meant to invalidate what you're playing but to what you're saying but to prove a different point um as of right now on the hs replay dex page sorted by win rate <laughs> Number 10 is standard Frost Death Knight. <laughs> what what ranks, though? Diamond 3 Legend. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it, that deck is kind of broken, so, you know. It is, yes. <laughs> it's it's behind uh, a bunch of secret mages, four different secret mages, three different even shamans, a really cool-looking outcast DH that I'm going to play after the show. I'll send you a link, <laughs> Edelweiss. And then uh, one even and holy uh dk but then after that it is uh it is standard frost dk with zero wild wild exclusive cards it's actually even the old list with the acolytes oh no is it is it, is it going all the way back to body baggers or no it, it's yeah it's the it's the <laughs> original pheno list and wow. it's showing uh over a small sample size of course because it's wild and because you know it's not that many games 62.5 percent win rate diamond through legend over 300 ish games yeah pretty funny uh, probably just fine, but like not ideal for climbing. But you probably can right now. Um, but yeah, it's. I talked about this extensively uh, on TAC yesterday, but just to reiterate, like Wild's design intention is where we've landed. When you make a non-rotating format, it is going to look like this, and that is the point. It's not fun. For the vast majority of people competing if you're not competing wild 9x or below is the best format in the game people just play what they want to play it's it's functionally identical to casual except the the victory screen's a little longer and you get ranked rewards but outside of that like it's you just play whatever you want and people are playing whatever they want and you try all sorts of stuff whatever it's cool but competitive wild is going to look like this because it's a non-rotating format that gets more cards it's there's just no way around it so you kind of have to leave this to be what it is, and then you kind of have to do something else. I think there is no real solution other than make some other format somehow. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how they're going to do it. You're going to run into fragmentation. I'm not I'm not sure. But yeah. good like, luck I, to I them. That's why they're having a summit. It's to figure <laughs> it out, I guess. 
Yeah, I, I don't I, I just don't know if balancing regularly is really like feasible. Right? Like you're just playing whack a mole at the end. Not of the with day. a final design team of two people. Right. Like, no, that is not possible. It's <laughs> I, I don't mean to be pithy. They cannot keep up with standard right now. How will they do wild? <laughs> yeah. Like you can't release concert quarter and then say, well, just go balance an additional eight years of cards. That's not realistic. You have to hire a lot more people. They should hire a lot more people anyways. But I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. But it's, they'd have to hire a lot more people if they want to start balancing wild. And also, it's a format where the entire point is to not touch cards so people can play with them. Right. So you can't like go in there and balance and then say this is the same format. You got to do something else. So... Good luck, Matt London. Yeah. Matt's a smart guy. He'll figure it out. I have faith. I hope so. Can, Maybe and, Brad and will help. A Brad. Brad. Team Brad. That's uh, that's all we have for news this week. Real. Oh, it's, oh, creator program. The emails started going out. Some people are getting accepted. Some people are getting asked for more information. Uh, I, I haven't seen the emails myself, uh, but I know that there are some going out, like Alkali has tweeted about it, saying um, first wave of email is going out, going out in batches, and get a response whether you've been accepted or not. Some of them are, we need more info emails. This is to help the smaller streamers. Some of you are pretty close, but we need more info about you. It's also giving a direct line to regional community managers. So if you got an info request, it also told you, how do I get in touch with the person that is going to review this application? How do I convince them? How do I compel them? So, yay, they're doing stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Things are happening. Yes. And I don't believe that that anything has moved past the acceptance phase. Like, there's no, I don't believe that anything has changed yet for those folks other than getting the email, but that'll probably start next week, I assume, uh, where people start getting accepted and, like, it get added to the Discord or whatever. So, yeah. All right. Was that news? That was news, right? Yeah. That's it. All right. Steve, got you got a you got a secret second news. It's the grand tournament. That's right. We actually have tournament news to talk about. Not much, but a little bit. Um there was an announcement on uh today is the 20 the on Tuesday that this coming weekend on February 24th and February 26th will be a Twitch Rivals Community Cup uh, featuring Battlegrounds. So Slissa and RDU will both have uh, their own tournaments. Slissa's is on February 24th, starting at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And then RDU's is Sunday, February 26th, also at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, there are, there's a link that we'll have in the show notes. If you're listening to this as we're streaming it, or, you know, if you're listening to this before that event happens and you are a Twitch partner or affiliate, uh, it, I'm not sure if, it, if the one that's on the 24th is still going to be open, but certainly the one on, on the 26th, you may be able to, uh, to still get into. So go do that and, and watch it because, you know, this is a rare a rare non a rare third party event and yet yeah, it is sponsored by Twitch but still you know if the people watch it maybe they will do more of these types of things which is what we would like because otherwise this section is very very short yeah this is cool jkrex in the chat he says he's playing in that yay yay i'm going to watch it if i'm not working might even watch it if I am. Shh, shh, shh. Don't <laughs> tell. Don't tell anybody. Um, yeah. It's cool. We've got links in the show notes. Go check it out. Battleground stuff. And that's tournaments. Okay. That was fun. Nice little jaunt down memory lane here. Let's go talk about strategy. Priest. Shadow Priest. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, code and list in the show notes. 
It is similar to the Vicious Syndicate lists, but is not quite the same. I took the one uh, that... I took the original iteration that Zach made, and it originally had one in death, two Brittle Skin Zombie. I cut a Brittle Skin Zombie, I added a Shadow Word on death, and it originally, we didn't have the data on Mind Seers, so Void Shards were what people were playing, but we cut the four mana damage spell for the one mana damage spell is approximately three mana better, uh, and uh, we also, I, I chose to go down to one Brittle Skin instead of two, just because you need one undead, but that is the worst one, and you never want double Brittle. And you often want double undeath because undeath is a crazy card. Okay. So. Title it Undead Deck Wins in honor of... God, there's a lot of magic <laughs> references to this show. Um, that, that is, that yeah, is, that is a good deck theme, though. That is good. Yes. So, is this an aggro deck? Kinda. It's a burn deck. Is it, yeah, it, it's sort of like burn... Maybe... There's kind of one sly. one drop in the deck and a two drop like Astlor you're never playing on two. So there's one one drop and one two drop. This is not zoo. This is not a flame imp deck. This is not a go wide deck. Not really a face hunter either. Reminds me more of uh Rise of Shadows Lackey Rogue. Very similar mm. to that deck with like the waggle picks, where you're just you're yeah. nickel and diming your opponent with a bunch of life drinkers and equivalent and just a bunch of damage that they can't really stop. Or interact with all that easily. And like you're capable of building pretty wacky boards. But it's all in the service of converting that board into damage. You don't need your minions to stick around. You just need to do enough damage. And you do a lot of damage. Over the course of the of the game. Like you can easily beat blood DKs in the long game. No matter how many vampiric bloods they play. You can easily beat quest priests. Control priests. Whatever. Uh, it's You have enough damage. But yeah. we're kind of a slow burn in a way, uh, that you take a couple turns to get going. But you should be counting your damage basically every turn after turn three. Constantly counting your damage. It is all about making sure that you keep the pressure on. We don't trade very much. We pressure. We do our thing. We have to be aware of what the opponent is doing. We have to mitigate it. But we're not really looking to get in a board fight. We play stuff, we set up the pins, and our opponent has to knock them down, and they get hurt when they do. That's kind of what we're right. going for. So, my co-hosts, each got in a few games before the show. What was the experience? Do you think the way I'm describing it matches yours, your feelings? Yeah. I mean, I, I played a few games in casual because I wasn't willing to go, you know, risk my rank for this. But, um... Not a played risk. It. Well, you know, I... I look... I'm, I'm, I, it's been a while. I know how to play Frosty K. I know what I like and I like what I know. But, um, but I, I did play a few games. The games that I did not play against Ramp Druid for some reason, the, the Ramp, I played against multiple Ramp Druids who just had the nuts. And, you know, they, they both had, you know, all of the ramp into under, underkeeper into our earth and scales and just got out of range. But, that happens but other than that like i mean i had boards i don't even remember what was on the board that i like that board that i that i put into the chat like turn six i had four times four to 20, 25 power on the board on turn six and then and also four, if four, they <laughs> if they clear your board they take 12 and a reborn comes back and they were at eight right so they would yeah. uh die i believe <laughs> That that is that is the correct word, yeah. So I mean, when it when it works, it it works really really well. I had no idea what I was doing with the mulligan, other than like keep a three a three mana on dead. But other than that, I had no idea what I was doing with the mulligan. But it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, it, it if you can get it to, you have to kind of think about how you're sequencing things and when you want to intentionally sack your minions to proc something like a grave digging or a basilef or something like that but if you set up the turns right you just end up in this snowball that just comes out of nowhere and it's it's very very hard for an opponent to come back from it unless they you know have a, a specific sequence of of things that they can do to you yeah i went five and two very quickly before the show <laughs> Uh, I, I called it Death Shadow because, you know, I'm dead and it's a shadow deck. But it's 
as you've described, had, the way that Undead sort of plays aggressive has this different vibe of just, I keep playing things and they're going to hit you and you're going to clear them, but, but they come back. And so rather than the explosive games being you playing a bunch of stuff in the first three turns, it's like you play a sticky thing on three. Like ideally you go undying allies and a, and a, a good three drop. And then you're like, oh, they killed both halves. Basilef. <laughs> now, now they're both back. And like that is, particularly if someone had to like spend their board to, to kill those, like now you have three minions in play. Like let's say a three, five and two, four, three is like, that's nuts. And, and since they're death rattles, you get all this extra benefit. I find that a lot more often rather than on, on turn four, you'll do Basilef on like five or six and, and get just like a yeah. ton of stuff uh, because people will avoid killing your things for a little while. And then they're like, well, now I have to kill them because they hurt too much. Yeah. And it's just presenting this, you know, impossible choice of, well, do I kill the thing and take the death rattle or do I take four? And yeah. f what Frost will try and do is pressure you enough that they can make it to freezing your board and not have to worry about the death rattles. But you can get going like just fast enough sometimes that they're not able to do that. It's going to depend largely on how they're able to construct quarter. But and how you're it, able to shadow word on death. If you can undeath, you yeah. undo everything you do. That card is wacky. Oh, yeah. yeah, shadow word on death, I think, was was also a slow burn just as a card because we didn't have anything to do with it for quite some time and people were like, ah, this is sort of a, just an awkward clear. But when you know that you're activating it, it just is, you know, in the way that Frostworm's Fury is like, let me deal damage to you and invalidate your board. This is, let me deal damage to you and clear your board. Yeah, and then you can, the pair, with it the, you can pair with an attendant and then you get to do six and, yep. and it's, and, and I mean, it's always been, <laughs> It's always it's always been good when it's gone off when it when it's yellow and bad when it's green. But it, the problem was just getting it to yellow, and this mm -hmm. deck is very good at getting it to yellow. Yep. Incorporeal corporal is also a really key part of that. So we're going to talk about all these. All right, some some key cards. First of all, this is really a shadowed spirit deck that has to run backups, right? If you could run seven shadowed spirits. As your seven undead, you would do it. Well, five of them, and then two corporals probably. You would do it every time. Brittle Skin Zombie is very clearly the cut rate version of Shadowed Spirit. Haunting Nightmare. Luckily, they buffed it, so it's a bunch of bodies. Like it's fine. Uh, but Spirit is clearly the thing that you want to do. Um, Undying Allies, zero mana, Shadow Spell. The undead you play this turn get reborn. I consider myself extremely fortunate. If I hit two undead with this, and also, like, I just don't care, you want to coin this on two. Coin, allies, shadowed spirit is roughly equivalent in my eyes to egg into coin quarter. Like, it is just your power turn. It does a lot for you. Sets up Basilef really, really well. It's really hard to deal with. And if shadowed spirit connects face a single time and has reborn, that's 10 damage. Is a 10 damage card. It's assuming it hits face once, and often will do that more than that. So, Dying Allies, Basilef, as mentioned, Bassy is crazy good, super <laughs> duper good, especially if you get the Reborn going. It amplifies all your good stuff, but don't be afraid to play Bassy for just one card. Turn three, Spirit, they clear it. Turn four, Bassy, that is a four mana seven eight that deals your opponent three damage when half of it dies. Just do it. Just, just do that. That's good enough. But also, Incorporeal Corporal. Two mana, five, five undead. After it attacks, it dies. This card is what really ties the room together, right? Because it's... You, you play it. There are two options. One, you leave it on the board. Or two, you play a one mana spell that exploits it. Whispers of the Deep is the big one, because you play that, and then your 5-5 five five doesn't die, and all of your opponent's stuff dies instead, which is substantially better for you. <laughs> it's really unfair. Like, really, really unfair. It shoots five missiles, and your two-mana 5-5 five five just lives forever. Pretty gross. Pretty crazy. Or, you can attack with an animated dead with it back. But quite often, you want to play it and then just not attack the following turn. 
because as long as it's in play, you can decide whenever you want to trigger a grave digging, to trigger an animate dead, or to trigger shadow word on death. So quite often, I find myself playing this on three or four, and then if you play it on four, you just get to attack the next turn, you just get to undeath people, it's really strong. Or you can do something like attack, grave digging, uh, and and Basileth. There, there are a lot of things that you can do with Corporal's Death on Demand that's really powerful. Or, inexplicably, opponents like to trade into it. In which case, it's two mana kill probably two things. That's cool. You take those. We're okay with that. Yeah, particularly because if you are the one attacking with it for a trade, then you don't get a value trade because of the the death text but if they are so scared of it that they have to send things in its stats are big enough that it will eat multiple things uh, or a pretty serious removal spell yeah yeah and and the other thing that is important to remember with a deck like this is there is value in tempoing out a card that you you might be tempted to hold on to to try to squeeze value out of because your opponent will probably need to devote a, a time and resources to removing it. Like sometimes it's okay to just throw void touch attendant out on one, right? Depending oh, on what the matchup that. is. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Go in first, <laughs> go in second, eh, a little sketchier. Yeah. It's like peasant, right? Like, like, like peasant and unholy. It's the, the same sort of thing. Like either, it lives great while well, it gets to do two and then you get to do you get to you know continue hitting your opponent or they use the coin probably to go and kill it in which case they've used resources and they've you've you've diverted them from doing whatever it was that they wanted to do because they saw that thing and they got spooked and now you get to continue to develop behind it so it it's it's tempting to just like hoard your your attendance for lethal but sometimes just getting the damage through is uh, is important. Oh, that reminds me. One of those games against the Ramp Druid, I had just played it out and gotten some damage in against them, and they had Astalor combo the following turn. So uh, yikes. That, did, that, did, that didn't work out so well for me. But that again, that that's that's you know the exception to prove the rule, basically. Yeah, it's a tenant is high in the mulligan win rates from what I can see for similar decks. Uh, going first on one, it feels really, really powerful. A lot of decks, they play a 1-2 on turn one. Like the arms dealer thing, it just kind of shuts off arms dealer. If they, if your hero power turns that off. So a tenant's going to get in a lot of damage. And quite often you can set up like mind seers or corporals or w with whispers or whatever and just keep them from removing your tenant for a couple turns, at which point it's already done somewhere between like 6 and 10 damage. And sometimes you just animate dead it back whenever you want, and it's cool. It's all right. It's a weird kind of card in this deck because it, it changes your plan when you have it going first, but also it enhances your plan later in a way that isn't intuitive. But sometimes you just do a bunch of damage, and a lot of your spells scale. Shadowcloth Needle scales really well with Void Touch Attendant uh, because you're dealing an extra three damage with that. Uh, often Shadow Word Undeath scales really well. You can get a bunch of pings otherwise. Mind Seer is crazy, uh, especially if you have like any of your death rattles that deal damage. It's just effective. It's Void Touch Tenant. Yeah. If you've all played against this at any point in the past year and a half, you understand the power here. Yeah, and <laughs> and there's also like against a against a control deck where they've gotten a lot of armor or they've played multiple vampire bloods or whatever. Sometimes you just hold both of them and then you play them on ten with Astalor and you get there anyway. Because each one of those of those bolts that hit states does three damage instead of one. Yeah. Uh, though I will point out, do not tempo Astalor in this deck. That is not what we're here for. It ruins your animate dead, and he's just a two-two. It's not it. Don't do that. Okay. Mulligan targets. You need an undead, and you always keep undying allies because it dramatically enhances any undead. If you don't have either of those, you are full mulliganing. If you have one of those, you're mulliganing for the other. You can, uh, even if you don't have an undead, go ahead and keep the undying allies. It's fine. You really want that card early because it dramatically enhances your early game. It falls off a bit as the game goes on. And don't worry about undying allies usually on a corporal because your ideal play with corporal is to silence it. And so reborn, not great there. Uh, but sometimes it is correct to do. 
just don't worry too much about it. I, even if I have it on two, if I have another undead on three, I will just reborn the, the three mana one. Um, but you need an undead. If you have an undead, you can keep Needle. If you're going first, you can keep a tenant. And if you have Corporal, you can keep Whispers. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much what you're looking for. Should you keep Cathedral because it's card draw? Nope. Neither. Don't keep Grave Digging either. Bone Caller costs too much. Basilef, it's tempting, but you have to have, like, a really crazy looking hand. And even then, on the coin, it's kind of not great. Because it doesn't line up exactly how you want. Because you want to coin out the reborn thing on two. Basilef shines when you reborn something on three, and then they killed both halves, and you play it on four. But if you were going first, would you keep Ally Spirit Basilef? Depends on the matchup. I'm not sure I would. I'm not sure I would keep the Basilef there. I might look for a I might look for a corporal, I might look for an animate dead, might look for a needle, that sort of thing. And you can keep animate dead if you have an undead as well. Um, you can you can keep that. If you have a non corporal undead, I think. We don't really want to keep that with Corporal because bring back Corporal is okay, but it's not really the same kind of scaling value. But no I Cathedral, say, no Grave Digging, don't keep Mindseer usually, you know. In terms of a, a matchup thing, that's tough with Frost because you aren't going to know whether you're against Frost or, or Blood, but... You're you know, against Frost. You, <laughs> if, well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying if you do learn you're against Blood um, early enough on... You may even want to avoid the two drop just because you would much rather resurrect things like Shadowed Spirit or uh, or even the, the Brittle Bone. Because if you're resurrecting incorpor- incorporeal corporals, those remove themselves for the blood decay and all they have to do is gain life. So you'd much, much rather be bringing back uh, your actual death rattles in slower matchups yeah so the mulligan feels like and this is all i'm i'm going on brief experience here i'm not sure what the stats will say once we have them i'm i'm pretty sure that i'm pretty close to right on most of these things um but i'm curious to see what the stats say uh you'll also really want to pay attention to keep rates once we have decks in HS Replay, because you'll probably see Animate Dead has a really, really high mulligan win rate, but probably a lower keep rate, because you only keep it when you have an Undead RA, that sort of thing. Same with, I would expect to see the same thing with Needle as well, because you really don't want that instead of an Undead, but if you already have an Undead, that's one of your better turn one plays, one of your only turn one plays. And just a couple pings of damage here makes a big difference. Uh, you know, they're, the breakpoints that we're hitting are pretty specific, and there are times where, like, you'll mine Seer a 3 health minion and then kill it with the proc on Needle and you won't get the extra 3 damage and it's fine, right? It's still a 1 mana Howling Blast. We take those. So, let's see. Key plays we talked about, coin allies undead. Like, if you have coin allies and a 3 drop undead, you should probably do that. Don't need to wait for multiple undeads. Uh, Corporal and Whispers, obviously good play. If you have that, probably do that. Though, against Frost DK, they'll freeze you. Don't forget, Silence undoes freeze. So I've had a couple cheeky whispers lethals that people aren't wise to yet. Take advantage of that while you can. We talked about Basleff and allies. Oh yeah, the 4-3 from Haunting Nightmare. Go ahead and silence that guy for a whispers if you're looking for a whispers target. Like, sometimes you'll whispers things with a death rattle. You don't really want to. But the 4-3 that pops out of Haunting Nightmare, it, it's... That doesn't have any text, so you can just do that. I don't know. Does that all make sense? Did I miss anything here? No. It's pretty solid. Not frozen solid, but still solid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did all right against Frost Death Knights as well. I, I didn't just... see any when I was playing it Monday. I may see someone if I play it tomorrow, if the deck still exists tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see. It's so like we don't have stats here, and also I am not presumptuous enough to say, well, the archetype loses, but my deck list doesn't. We're probably <laughs> unfavored, but I found the double on death and the consistent activation and the double whispers makes us feel pretty solid in that matchup. Like I feel like we can yeah. compete, and again, my personal record is highly favored here, though part of that is people don't know what I'm doing. 
Like I played against Clark today yeah. and he was on the frost list and I was doing stuff and he's like, what's going on over there? How did we die? <laughs> but you know, <laughs> no one, no one understands or knows it yet. Like it's starting to creep up. Baby bear made a video on, on a similar deck today, but it's not going to be the sort of thing where people know every single card in your deck and exactly how it plays each game. Yeah. And it's certainly like the whole, you know, whispers of the deep against the frost Worms fury thing is probably something at least for the next couple of days, you might be able to sneak past, but you know, cause like, that's just like what, I mean, anytime you see anything, it's not a death night, you know, there's like a couple turns of confusion anyway. Right. Like, it's just like, Oh, what's this other class? It's not death night. So, and yeah. then they're trying to figure out like what the hell you're doing, you know, is, is it, 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 by the time that they figure out what you're, what you're up to, you may be able to sneak it through. I mean, honestly, even once they do figure it out, like, what are you going to do playing around a, a silence into your Frost Room's Fury? Usually, their goal at that point is, I'm going to freeze you for the rest of the game until you die. Yeah. If they are wise to the fact that they might die, that's still not great for them because then they have to clear things. And we have many things that want to be killed, so... It's a challenging thing for them to avoid, even if they are aware that you could silence your own stuff for, for an attack. But you need to have a good start. They have to have a, a not crazy start, like, sure. they, you know, but which, look, which happens. You know. What I have found playing my weird decks is basically I'm not trying to beat people's insane, like, foul egg coin quarter starts. Like, that is hard to do no matter what. But if you can beat people's mediocre draws, which happen yeah. relatively often, right, uh, then you're kind of okay. And and so I feel like my stats, not, I mean, perhaps both with this, but also with my weird lists have been pretty good because I am beating the non-Frost Death Knights and I'm doing, like, okay against the Frost Death Knights. Because they don't always draw the nuts, and sometimes I draw the nuts. So it's, yeah, it's a, a weird thing when there is a deck that, like, has some just, like, really overwhelming games where there's nothing you can do because quarter is so overwhelming. But, uh, yeah, I feel like this has a good chance. And honestly, I feel like Shadow Word on Death is, is a big yeah. player there. In the Frost DK and matchup I, yeah. in particular, it's a really big deal. Yes. Well, unholy, yeah, yeah, yeah. too, of course. Yeah. When, when I was playing this b much longer ago, different sort of version, I found I felt that way specifically about the Imp Warlock matchup, where Shadow Word Undeath just would hard carry sometimes, especially when you have a Shadow Cloth Needle equipped. Because just, like, you clear everything. And particularly if they were saying like, oh, I'm just going to go face because I'm more aggressive and I'll ignore your stuff and you'll have to trade. And I'm like, mm, no, Shadow Root on death. This especially happens with Brittlebone because they don't want to kill it on their turn because they'll take damage. So then it stays up and you go, all right, Shadow Root on death, hit you for four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, if, when you have a needle up, it's a shield chatter that only hits your opponent and goes face. Like we, we would play that card. Like that's that's a that's a pretty good card. And I mean, if you can like even if you're only going 50 percent against Frost Death Knight, right? Like, let's just say that you're 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 it's a it's a coin flip. If you're beating everything else, then you're still ahead. Going so 50 percent against hard. Frosty K feels like ahead to me, like in, in yeah. this format. I mean, nothing else has got that kind of a, that kind of a of a record against against Frosty K except maybe blood. And that's even coming down a little bit. So the uh, the play that we'll see more of, if people figure out this matchup from Frosty Case in particular, is Vizier School Teacher for Dark Transformation, and they transform yeah. our reborn stuff. Because mm. Dark Transformation, it's a two mana un unholy spell. Target undead becomes a four five rush. It becomes a contract quarter token. It's the same token. So I've had that happen a couple times where sharp people, they vizier into a zero mana thing. It, giving me a four or five with rush was much better for them than me having two shadowed spirit die and enter the res pool. I lost the game because my animate deads didn't do anything anymore. 
So mm-hmm. that is the play right. that people will pick up on if they're playing more DK that could swing the matchup in their favor if they happen to get it online in time. It, because it, it, it takes a lot, though. I mean, it's, it yeah. takes... Like, you have to discover it, first of all. There's, like, the the, pal's, the pool's not big, but it's not small. You can't necessarily target the thing that you want all the time. Yeah, but if, if they Vizier on turn two or whatever, or like an early Vizier, if they know the matchup and the opponent hero is a purple priest with a needle equipped, you pick the either the Dark Transformation or the Vampiric Blood. Vampiric Blood is fine, too. One of those two. Yeah. Um, though Life Gain won't get you there. It has to be Life Gain and Counter Pressure. Life gain by itself. I guess, I guess Blood Boil might be okay too. On Vizier, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's off fine. of Vizier, yeah, yeah. Though, also, we're like we're not bad against that because remember, we want our minions to die, and we can also silence them. So, you have to like right. really be sure that the extra life is important and that you're you're clearing the board in a way that's meaningful. Like it's yeah. If it's a if it's I, a like big holy nova. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's offsetting some of the damage, then it's it's pro- it, it might be okay. Yes. Um, so overall matchups, Evolve Shaman is worse for us because of Primordial Wave. Like, they can scam us, but also Primordial Wave, and we don't have damage agnostic removal. So if they have a turn 2 Thaddeus, you can just probably go. Um, like, you can do a bunch of damage to a target, but fast 11, 11 taunts to let them play the rest of their hands, not really what we're looking for. Primordial Wave is kind of a big problem. You want to make sure that you're not leaving your incorporeal corporals up in that matchup. You want to attack with them right away to get them into the animate Deadpool and to make sure that they don't get transformed into one drops. Um, and there are a couple other matchups that we have trouble with. Aggro Mage is not great for us just because they're lower to the ground and they have a bunch of freezes. And also Frozen Touch that we can't do anything about, which is kind of what we're trying to do to them. But they're faster, and they have freezes. Not great. Um, no, 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 what else? The, the, like, we're fine against slower decks. We, we ain't got no problems against Blood DK. We're favorite there. Um, we yeah. should be okay against most of the slower stuff. Uh, like Ramped Root, I know you had a couple bad games, Steve, but we should yeah, be highly I, favored like, in that match. Those are those are outliers. <laughs> I mean, Quest Priest is probably going to be the most one of the most challenging ones out of the the slow decks because of Shard of the Naru. I would imagine we're okay against them. I played two two right before the show when fifty fifty. The stats indicate that we are slightly favored, uh, just because they need to have silence specifically at a pretty clear time. And they also have to decide, do I use it early on the first minion or do I use it later? The transform effect is much worse for us than the uh, than the silence you don't effect. Like, sounds yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, because yeah. we get back something else because Animate Dead just shuts off completely. Uh, and that's really, really bad for us. But the Unholy DK can actually be like kind of problematic if we don't get Undeath online on time because... We aren't able to nickel and dime them. Our four threes line up really poorly against Nerubian Swarm Guards. Mm-hmm. They can just stop us and then Grave Strength us. So that matchup is undeath or no. Um, but we should generally be favored against Quest Priest. We are generally favored against Thief Rogue, though they can do Thief Rogue things. They can do Thief <laughs> Rogue things. Um, yep. And otherwise, well, we're kind of waiting for stats to come in because we're just speaking off of anecdotal experience in a highly warped meta. I'm not sure. We'll see. So try it out, listener. That's our explanations. Hopefully, this deck will be the thing after the nerfs, and so then we don't have an outdated <laughs> explanations on the feed. We yep. have an indated one. It gets better over time, like a fine wine, which is good because we sent <laughs> much of this episode fine whining about Death Knight. And so hopefully, this becomes more relevant. As time goes on. It, it could be reborn, even. Yeah. It could be. I don't know. Thoughts? Or are we... Is that... Are we good? I think we're good. Yeah. I think we're Pat good. Says go episode. Yeah. Efficient. Not an oh, aggro oh. episode. Just a fast one. There, there is one important point that we need to cover for Shadow, Shadow Priest Priest Portrait Etiquette. Uh, SI7 yeah. Anduid is top tier. Yeah, what are the other... Like... Um, Sally White Mane's pretty good because she she shouts, Arise my champion whenever you animate dead. Yes. As seen in Svalna <laughs> Priest. So, I those are the two that you I think you can want. justify um, Madame Lazul. I think that's okay. I think you can do a Madame Lazul. Yeah. 
A shadow touch Zarella is okay also. She's she's naturally shadow touched, yeah. Yeah. But you you can't do the new Zarella. That's illegal. That's illegal. It's not allowed. I think I only use Tyrande. <laughs> Or, or, or I think um, like Anduin holding the lion cub. I don't think you can do that either. I'm pretty sure that's illegal also. No. Yeah, I can't do that. There's so many cool Tarandas, and I just don't remember to change them for Tyrande's Shadow. Tyrande's fine. The Celestial one looks pretty nice with the purple. Mm. Man, there are so many priest portraits. Oh, yeah, Banshee yeah, Tyrande is okay. The Banshee, yeah, Banshee one's fine. fine. Yeah, you can obviously mm -hmm. do that. It fits really well, actually. So, Star Guardian Toronto or whatever it is, like, uh, you know, Celestial Toronto, whatever the, the I, know, I know it's not Star Guardian, but whatever they're calling it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that that one, that one's a little bit iffy, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, as fascinating as this is, for any future priest portrait and emote related questions, please tag Steve in the Discord at Wicked Good. And otherwise... That's going to do it for our show this week. So we have many folks like to thank. Check out the thanks section on the website, coinconceit.com. Find our contact info, our show notes, patron information. You can support our show at patreon.com slash coinconceit. Join us every week live by following us on Twitch at twitch.coinconceit.com. Join our community chats in our Discord at discord.coinconceit.com. Email at coinconceit at gmail.com. On Twitter at coinconceit. Like, share, and follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash coinconceit. CC swag, shop.coinconceit.com. Big thanks to our producers, Number Theory, Doshi K, Crush Cat, Beef Squatch, David P, Fade to Block, Wild Lou, Jeremy T, Bottle Caps, Lucky, Grumpy Monk, Crab Mart, The Burger Club, and Mr. Bungalow, thank you for subbing to the show. Coin Concedes, Edelweiss, you got a good one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Coin Concede to Blizzlet. Just since I, I picked it back up, uh, it's just brightened each of my Thursdays when I'm you know feeling exhausted from the week and it helps me just kind of kind of get through the rest I, I have to say it is not just the addition of eve and smarms to the show but the influence they have had on the show broadly especially smarms it really has has gone places i never thought or, or imagined uh and and is a hilarious contrast to my actual work so <laughs> Yes, it is. I would hope so. Well, obviously, but <laughs> given what you do during the day, I would I'll be, hope it's I'll a be contract. sitting there with headphones, and I'm just like, "Yep, well, <laughs> that's what they said." I'm gonna try not to make a face. This is this is this is not a, this is not a language lesson today. <laughs> uh. Bluetooth earbuds are, are very important. <laughs> Well, go listen to Blizzlet with the aforementioned summary as a caveat and or warning, I suppose. <laughs> Steve, I should probably you have a warning. Blizzlet contains adult content. Extremely <laughs> adult content. <laughs> yes. So, Steve, coin concedes. Uh, I am going to coin concede to Edel because I posted a draft of this guide that I wrote in a burst of hyper focus and Edel looked at it and immediately said hey you're repeating yourself over and over again you should probably fix that and i said yeah you're right i should and it made it made the art the the guide a lot better so thank you for catching that in and saving me for myself uh a little bit i i do i i i legitimately appreciate it i know some people you know i i could tell that you were a little bit you seem maybe a little bit anxious about you know, pointing it out of like, no, it's really so, like, so I look, know how I get what I get. I have that a problem time. when it comes <laughs> to like g grammar or, or those kinds of corrections. I one time corrected my board game design professor on grammar mid, uh, mid lecture. Oh. And I was like, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> so, uh, I, n I never know how it's going to be re yeah. received. <laughs> No, it, it. I mean, I'm married to an English major anyway, so like, I, I, I am you. I'm used to these types of things, but it, it's helpful because it absolutely was very repetitive and kind of annoyingly worded at the time. So it was, it was a, it was a vast improvement. Just forcing me to slow down and catch that before I just press publish on the thing. So thank you. Yeah, it's a good guide. Um, thank you. And I will coin concede to uh, first to Weiss for being a cat. 
And second, I will coin concede to uh, Cat. There he is. It's Cat. Audio listeners, you do not understand what you're missing here. Um, coin concede to Ace103. Uh, we, we connected over something pretty important over the past week, and I, I'm really appreciative of their, uh, their, of their awareness. Um, and I think that's going to do it. So, keep calm and coin ally spirit. And if you see us on ladder, coin concede. Coin concede. Coin concede. Cool. Right. All right. You got a you got a nice nice light weekend ahead of you. Oh man, it's the calm it's like before a... the storm, you know. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, what will we have next week? Patch notes, I guess. We'll have patch notes. No, I I, I mean like the couple of weeks until. Yeah, I don't know what next week will be like, but once we get next cards, week, we'll have patch again, notes. It's... And then two weeks after that, we should get an announcement. Um, yeah. So hold on. I right. made, I charted a calendar, an amateur calendar of when I think things are going to happen. Let's see. How close have I been? Um, yep. I got the mini set correctly. Um, so I'm expecting March 14th, assuming a three week turnaround for the pre patch. Uh, and then the standard launch on April 11th. So that means we should start I mean, getting cards. At this point, more. it's basically like a, a system, right? Like You can kind of set your watch to it. Yeah. Because yeah. like, they're, yeah. they're just like so... Except the They're so one. constrained by the, patch, by the patch schedule, like the patch timing, right? Of like how long it takes them to get a patch out that there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Yep. It's, uh, it's one client patch a month. And then uh, one data only patch a month in between, and then emergencies. Uh, so that's really it. Uh, and we haven't had too many emergency patches. It's like Lich King actually patched really, really fast in December, and then they took quite a bit of time off. But so I was talking about this on Angry Chicken, Steve. I think that many sets are actually making the game worse, uh, like yeah. pretty substantially. Yeah, we we, we could yeah. have talked about that. I was an interesting listen, and I. At first, I mean, it was like I'm not going to no, talk on Thursday, where a news topic no, no, is I, me I, yesterday. That's not that's know, not going to work for anybody. An interesting well, piece of news provided by me yesterday, where I responded to a question, and I think that's newsworthy. It's... And then on Angry <laughs> Chef, you could talk about buffing your Zol Giant, and you know, then you know, it's a whole cycle. I probably but, do that well, too much already. No. At, but, anyways, to off off the record. Um, I, at first, my reaction was like, no, I, the mini sets are great. And then I was like, oh, but four sets and no mini sets would, would be better. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, the best patch always gets cut short by a bunch of, like, by the mini set. It happened three for three this year, where we had yeah. this amazing patch for maximum two and a half weeks, and then it gets disrupted by something. Yeah. Well, the the other problem is that they're having to buff cards because the decks aren't playable because they haven't released the cards in the mini set that make those cards playable. And then they have to go back and nerf them. Like they, they kept buffing Death Knight and buffing Death Knight and buffing Death Knight. And then we got Construct Quarter. And if we had had Construct Quarter all along, like would they have had to, I, I mean, maybe some of those cards would need nudges, but would they have had to buff like, battlefield uh necromancer to one I mean, threes maybe maybe not the, right uh, honestly uh, unholy is not one i know of unholy is not right it now. right now well i but i mean once um, they once they bring it back I, down i think it i mean i think it might be so yeah I, I don't know like frost did not receive any of the buffs and it is the thing that's that's pretty impressive yeah. but um like i don't actually mind this current meta but that's because i like having an enemy um me too that's is, why i play free it is it is easier <laughs> it is easier to build when you like you having know enemies not making enemies that is not the same right. thing <laughs> it's easier to build when you know what you're up against yeah um, but like 45 percent of one deck at legend is not yeah. okay like I like yeah, knowing what I'm going to of my also. games this week have been Death Knight. Now, more of those have been Blood than probably other people because I was I was climbing, but 
I'm not even accounting blood. I'm just saying like at top one, top 1000 last one day, 44.64% of, of games are frost death night. What the hell? There's another 10, 11. That's blood death night. This but is why I eventually landed on, okay, I'm still going to run blood boil. Because the yeah. thing that I was struggling with at times was I didn't Being actually dead. have an answer. Well, I didn't actually have an answer to a wide board if I didn't have my quarter. Uh, and so unless I discovered something off of uh, Nerubian or a school teacher, or I, I was, I tried Pandaren, I tried Scorpid, and they had different problems. The importer uh, just gets eaten by a uh, four or five and the Scorpid gets eaten by a frost strike. So, um, but yeah, I was just like, you know what? I'm seeing less blood night, death night now that I've climbed some, I'm just going to actually run blood boil and it's fine because it doesn't kill your own board. So it's still not a liability in terms of using it. Um, unlike corpse explosion, but, uh, but it's also sustain and really saves your bacon a lot of times so yeah it's a good card it, i was i was very surprised to not see blood boil in your original list like i can understand cutting corpse explosion but well, blood the, boil is pretty look, crazy the yeah. original list was all in i mean i had korak right like it uh, okay not that list let's just let's all <laughs> pretend korak never happened because he never really did we can just we can just bloop past that the the follow-up list okay. i was still surprised to not see blood boils your only yeah, five drop I, was one Burning Blade Acolyte. Again, I, I still was not seeing the excessive amount of frost yet. Yeah. Um, well, that fixed itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. But yeah, it's, if they're not going to hire more designers, which they should, then they need to move the patch cadence. They need to get the patches away from the holidays, which they can do. Like it's, They still need to have a patch around the holidays because business needs something to sell in December. Um but even then, like, you can move it a, a little bit earlier. You can realign things. And yeah. the six-week patch is the good one. You need to give that one as much time as possible to shine. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Has the six-week patch, like, only been getting two weeks, basically? Two and a half maximum, yeah. It's because it's always two weeks after the set launch, they do the fast patch. Nine to 14 days. Uh... Two weeks after the BG's launch, which is six weeks after the set launch, they do the next balance pass. Two weeks after that, they do the mini set. Two weeks after that, they do mini set balancing. Uh, two weeks after that, they do pre-order, two or three weeks. And then they rarely balance between pre-order and launch. And if they do, it's like one or two cards maximum. Very or, or, the, or the great reversion, which sometimes comes in that. Well, that, like also. that's an event. That's with the or, next patch. That comes or point Prince zero. Renathal coming into the game and yeah. changing well, that's, everything. Yeah. That's with the pre-order patch, though. And then they usually leave that meta yeah, for yeah. a month. So that's right. that right. usually just sticks around. So the only times I can think of where they hit things in that period um, is like they took bees out of Kazaka Sound or they nerfed Allura. And that's really it. And otherwise, mm -hmm. the Great Reversion is the yeah. point zero patch, which is like a week before the expansion launch, which is really just a tavern brawl. Right? Like that's what they do for that for that period. <laughs> um, right. And like oh, sometimes so they'll nerf the guitar and core. ice ribbon. And, yeah, it'll be something. Yeah, I'm just looking back at what they did last year because I thought they did something right before. No, they didn't. We didn't have any. We went like three months with no card changes last year. Um, from like the the wild paw no nerf to rotation, there were no card changes after that. Uh, they took Sound the great. they took locust out of Kazakhstan. Yeah. Nitro Boost Poison in the year before was one that was done in that middle, that that in, uh, that extra yeah. window. The it's the point six point two, which is rare. Yeah. Well, look, there's got to be some time of the year to to catch up on on things. You know, I still haven't finished the the DLC for Tsushima. Still haven't yeah. finished Elden Ring. Yeah. Still doing some of the Baldur's Gate three early access stuff. God of War. It's a lot. Yeah, I like this is Hearthstone Summer Vacation. I really enjoy like spending the month of March doing other stuff. Usually, like I'll I'll dabble, but it's usually doing other stuff. It's a great time. And then we come back. Yeah, Metroid Prime Remastered was was fun. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah I when do does that. it's not for a long time, right? But when does 
Breath of the Wild 2 come out? May. Man. Yep. So yeah. long. And then Silk Song's around there too, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Steve, but listen how very am I carefully. Fight you Ganon. shut your damn mouth right now. <laughs> I thought they announced it. Did they not? No, no, no. I... They've teased it, and Microsoft oh. and Bethesda have announced it. As part of a game pass saying within the next year from this video, you'll be able to play this game. But we have heard nothing from Team Cherry. And let's just do not jinx Silk Song for me. Do not do it. I'm not. I'm not. I will not say it again. You're damn right you won't. Do not. That is one of two games this year, one of two sequels this year that I need. You know the other one is, right? We're just not going to see you for like a month after. When Hades 2 one. comes out, no, you're not going to see me. Yeah. You no, know you are not going to see me. We're taking that week off the show. I don't care what's happening. I don't care if they like, <laughs> if they emergency nerf final design, like whatever. I don't care. I'm playing Hades 2. You all can figure it out. to get an emergency guest for you. <laughs> yeah, you will. I'll be busy. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for hanging out with us in the post show, but we're going to go now. Bye. Bye. Bye.